Good day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and for today's video we'll be talking you through how to do a for loop instead of server-side JavaScript in Marketing Cloud. For loops in server-side JavaScript work much the same way as for loops in script. It allows you to cycle through a group or items a set number of times in order to print them out or use them for personalization or other kinds of dynamic content. The great thing is, is that because they're so similar, if you know how to do them in AMP script, you can probably learn them really quickly in server-side JavaScript as well. Now, unfortunately, the for loop is not documented inside the server-side JavaScript at the moment. However, because it's so similar to client-side JavaScript, we can use another learning way, which is the W3Schools. You can jump into W3Schools under JavaScript and find the JS loop 4, which gives us our for loops. And straight away, here is how we can write them out. So let's take this code and try it for ourselves inside Marketing Cloud. So first thing I've done for today is to create my very own content block inside of a cloud page, which will allow me to publish this code directly onto a site, which I can refresh quickly to make sure it works. And because we are doing some server-side JavaScript, we have to first declare a server-side JavaScript box. To do that, I'll use my starting script tags. So I'll copy my script tag and drop into my content block, insert JavaScript code here. Next, I can go into my W3Schools and pick up that for loop example. So here it is here. Now this for loop example is not gonna work exactly as it is. We'll have to do a little bit of a change to it. We are going to change the word let into var, which is a variable. And then we're going to not use the length of a car object, but instead count until the number 10. Now at the moment it is saying until we are less than 10, which of course we want until we are less than or equal to 10 to count up to 10. Once that's done, we'll then increment i and return back to the start. Then we want to try and print out that value along the way. So I can use my platform response and write to write out a value. Now the value I want to write out here, of course, is the value of i. And for good measure, I'll also use this line break to make sure we separate those numbers across different lines. So with this done, it's now going to cycle through with a variable of i starting at zero until we get to 10 cycling through and repeating until it hits that 10 number. Each time we cycle through, it's going to write out the number that we're up to plus a line break. So let's try it out. I save my code and then refresh my cloud page lookup. And there we are, starting at zero up to number 10. Perfect. So a really easy way to print out those values. But of course, printing out a static number of values from zero to 10 isn't the true power of this function. Where it really comes into its own is when you can use it along with a JSON object to surf through the various objects and print them out for yourself. So let's try it out with a sample JSON object. I'll jump back into the W3Schools, this time into the JSON documentation for what is JSON. We of course see it's our JavaScript object notation. We have here a great example of some JSON code. Within the JSON object, there is an entity called employees, which is the object which contains three rows of data. Name value pair, or first name John, last name Doe, Anna Smith, and so on. So I can copy this JSON object and go back into my code page. At the top here, I'll say var of JSON will be equal to and paste that value out. Now, because it is an object, I don't have to have it all in the same line. It will treat this entire section here as the object, so I can declare it this way. With that done, I can then cycle through this entity. Now, be in mind that if we were to cycle through the entity like we did on the JavaScript example here for car's length, the top level object in our JSON is actually employees. So we can't write this as until we get through JSON.length like you would have done because the length is currently one. There's only one object at that level. We have to traverse the object one more level down. So we now say JSON.employees.length. This then enters into the employee object and checks the length of that object. Well, the length of employees is in fact three. There is three objects, one, two, three. So now I can cycle through each of those objects. And the thing is, I can't just print out those objects because those objects are in fact an object. They're a JSON object. And I can't print those out. I can only print out strings. So I can use my platform JSON stringify. So jumped into my server side JavaScript, jump down into my platform functions, into my utility and get my stringify. This allows me to take an object and turn it into a string. So I'll take this function here, copy it and go down into my for loop. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stringify. So I'll var 
string will be equal to the output of what? Well, I want to stringify the JSON object inside of the employees element. On which row? Well, the I row. As I'm traversing this object, I want to pick up the row that I'm on. And it starts at zero, so it's ordinal zero, one, and two. So it'll pick up each row, take that object and stringify it. Then I can print out that string. What I should see when this is all done is three lines of output. I should see this line on the first line, then this line, and then this line. So let's see if that works. I'll go save and then refresh my page. And there we have it. There is our three stringified arrays of name value pairs inside that JSON object. And of course, I can continue to cycle through this by listening to each of the name value pairs and addressing them specifically. So rather than printing out each individual function with a stringify, I could instead say, well, let's print out first name and last name as two separate values. I won't have to stringify those because the value of first name is a string and the value of last name is also a string. It also works for a number, but because they're strings, they're ready to use for us today. So let's instead print out those two values. Well, our location is going to be JSON employees, of course, and it's the I row that we're on, and then we can address the value. Well, the first value address is first name. And the value of the first name address on the first row that we go through should be John. So we should print out John, and then we won't do a new line. We'll instead do a pipe, followed by the last name. Let's then print out that last name with another platform response print, printing out the address for last name, and then line break. Once that's done, we want to then cycle back to the top, which we'll do, and print out the second first name, second last name, and then third first name and third last name. That should now work as our for loop, not looping through a static number, but instead through the length of a JSON object. All right, let's go save and see if this works. Refresh and error, great start. Let's have a look and see what's gone wrong here. Well, to start with, we do have our write function but we actually have two write functions together. So we don't want to write twice. That was my bad. We actually just want to include the second address. So our one write function starts there. We're printing out the first name and then printing out the last name and then ending there. So first name, pipe, last name. All right, let's try that. Save and beautiful. First name, last name for those three objects. So just like an M script with for loops in server-side JavaScript, the for loop function is one of my most frequently used functions and by far one of my favorites. So I wholeheartedly recommend that if you are going to learn server-side JavaScript, that you definitely include for loops in your repertoire of things to learn so that you can do as much as possible with server-side JavaScript inside Salesforce Marketing Cloud. And I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to for loops in server-side JavaScript. If you have, then please let me know in the comments below and with a big thumbs up on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can notify when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.